Welcome to the Bringing Intimacy Back show, where intimacy is real. If you desire to intimately connect with yourself, significant other, children, family, friends, community, and higher power, then this is the show for you. We explore intimate topics, inspiring life stories, spirituality, and insightful tips on strengthening relationships. The show is hosted by Dr. April and her co-host, Coach K. Let's get this episode of the Bring Intimacy Back show started. We share with you today the secret power to intimacy to create the life you love or love the life you create. Now here is your host, Dr. April and her co-host, Coach K. Welcome to the Bringing Intimacy Back Show, where intimacy is real. Welcome, Coach K. Hello, hello. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing fabulous. Yes. As you guys see, we have a new intro and we are doing um, a new format today. So I'm so excited. I love that intro. It just, it make, I'm in here just bopping and bopping. Like the voice is so light and inviting. I love it. <laughs> Yes, definitely. Yes, yes. So on the show, on Bringing Intimacy Back, we always have a lot of guests that come in and talk about different things. So today, what we're doing differently is it's just going to be Coach K and I, and we're going to talk about some real stuff. And in fact, today's topic that we're going to talk about is the top intimacies women crave. So if you're out there and you're like, oh my gosh, I want to be more empowered. I want more intimacy. Chime in. Tell us what you want so we can tell you how to get it. Absolutely. And hello, Wayne Dingo. Yes, that intro is very nice. We have an audience member who's saying they also love the intro. I love this topic today um, because we get to talk about some things that only many women just think about. So maybe we'll get more people talking. Yes, definitely. And um, happy Women's Month, Sisterhood Month. Yes. yes. Happy yes. Women's Month. Woo. Yes. <laughs> and the great thing about this month and the great thing that I hope for everyone is that we should feel empowered. Yes. And That's everything. Right. Yes. 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 Because we're, you know, um, I've never been a man, but I've only been a woman, but there's great things about us, you know? And I think sometimes as women, we don't know how much power we really hold. You know, we let other people define us. My gracious. Yes. We're so moldable and adaptable and so used to it that we forget that, hey, we can be the one that sets our own tone. (laughs) Right. Definitely. Yes. Yes. And before I forget, we do have a charity of the month and the charity of the month is womenrising.org. And they also help to achieve self-sufficiency, help to empower. Yes, help women to get the things they need through social services, economic development and advocacy. That's beautiful. Yes, yes. So, you know, it's been a while. You've been on the show for about a while, maybe a year or so, and I've been on here for a while. one of the things we always ask our guests, but we don't really talk about ourselves, is intimacy. How do you define intimacy? Um, I define intimacy as simple as just the closeness between either with yourself or with another party. So, you know, when I think about just an intimate moment, I always go back to the moment when a child is born and it's just you and your child against your skin or an intimate moment of a hug um, and how you can sometimes melt into that hug or even just after a shower, putting on lotion, that intimate moment of you caressing yourself to moisturize yourself. So that's what I think of. And that's what intimacy is to me. Okay. What is that supposed to do to you? Oh, for me, it's actually being that full present, being fully present with yourself, um, with others. Um, and like you said, using all your senses, the sense of smell, the sense of taste. Mm. Yes, the sense of, well, I'm hugging myself and that's not taste, but <laughs> sense of touch. <laughs> that's kind of good though, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's just that that connection where you can completely be yourself. 
Yeah, and it's and it's sometimes difficult for women to take off the layers of mask and just get back to the intimate moment of self. So that is an important part of that definition. Right, definitely. And today, as we are talking about the five type type of intimacies women crave and the importance of before we even get to that to be empowered to feel like hey i can do this it is okay to be intimate it is great it's it's actually a necessity Mm -hmm. it is it's how we came into this world we came into this world in an intimate moment yes yes indeed no matter how we were produced how we came into the world Yes. yes Yes, yes. And so we need to take that in and as um, women, be okay with it. Be okay with yourself. I love it. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) So I'm excited to start our talk on that. Um, In relation to, I know last week we talked about narcissism and we did have a comment. And Mm -hmm. the comment basically was there's a woman out there, I'm assuming a woman, but it can be anyone who just ended a narcissistic relationship Mm -hmm. and she is struggling to be intimate again, that self empowerment. That makes a lot of sense. It's, it's scary to open yourself up and trust. Um, And the crazy thing is, I, was, I thought about this earlier today. I, I, the show wasn't even in my mind. And I just thought about the amount of women and, and men, of course, but right now it's all about the woman, okay? <laughs> the amount of women who want to open themselves and just be vulnerable and just just be open but because of something that has happened, even in their far past, may not even have been with a lover. They're just afraid to to open up. So that's a great question of how do you put yourself back out after you've allowed yourself to be peeled, the layers to be peeled back and you were just burned? Mm -hmm. I think part of it is... um... Sometimes we get so stuck at um, being mad at the younger version of ourselves. Yeah. 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 Or someone's in our ear telling us about X, Y, Z. So it's learning to love all of you. And when you know better, you do better. And of course, forgiveness of yourself. Forgiveness that you allowed yourself to be the open person that you want it to be. Right. And something happened, you know? And that's, how can I put it? Um, It's going to happen sometimes that we're open and someone hurts us. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And we have to heal from that. But we also can't live in this shelter where we're not open anymore. We've got to experience life. Yeah, because when you close out the world, you close out yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's a piece that I think sometimes is forgotten. You know, you feel like, you know, I'm just going to shut things off. I'm not letting anyone in. Well, sometimes you don't even let your own self in. And so when you don't start to rebuild that trust in yourself and that comfort to trust your, your judgment again, then it becomes even more difficult to open yourself up to the potential of a new love, a mm-hmm. new life, a new way of living and a new way of being. And you just immediately go into survival mode, which is just a surface level of self. Right, right. And to go back to answer the question, I think one of the first things in starting an intimate is being intimate with yourself. Yes. You know? Being able to look yourself in the mirror, touching your face, touching your whole body, seeing your whole body without any layers and thanking your body Yes, for every moment it's been on this earth. Another thing that you could do is to find the positive pieces in whatever it is you just came out of. Mm-hmm. 
because of course we're gonna we're gonna think about the ne the negative things because there was a break, you know, there was a split up. But if you can really go back and you think of how much you've grown, what you have learned, remembering those pieces that that was the positive piece out of it. You learned, you grew. Now you have this knowledge and this wisdom moving forward to utilize. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's okay to be confident with that wisdom, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. And when you do a lot of self-exploration, you get to understand yourself and know what you like. And then the next step is sometimes like, oh my gosh, I like this, but how do I tell my partner? Yes. <laughs> The, the growth, what is it? The growth discovery. Mm -hmm. um, and just being in a, in a marriage as long as I have, I experienced that often. You know, there are things that we met when I was 24. I just realized today, I, I know I said this before, but I forgot how old I was. I'm, I, I'm 43. There are things that I was dead set against. I was, you know, I wasn't a hugger. If I saw somebody I knew out in the street, I'd say, hey. Right. As I've grown and as I've continued to peel back layers and as I've learned to embrace me, mm -hmm. sometimes if I see somebody I haven't seen in a while and I, I, I may give them a hug, I may have more of a conversation. And that's a difference from what me and my husband had done for over 15 years. So then he looks at me like, you don't hug people. <laughs> um, but we talk about those things. When I start to feel as I open up, you know, they always say, they talk about grandparents. You get, you get soft in your old age because you treat your grandchildren <laughs> different than your children. Um, but you actually, you grow and you mature and you embrace yourself more mm -hmm. as you get older and that happens inside of your relationship as well right and definitely as you uh, mentioned that you're in your 40s and i think when i was in my 40s um that's when i started to become bold you know what i'm saying i think in the 30s you're so focused on what everybody else has to say or this and that but then when you get in your 40s sometimes you realize hey i can have an opinion i can be okay if this is what i like you know to be empowering now that i'm in my fifties, guys. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And don't look it. I love don't it that look. you say that. And yes. we're looking like where? <laughs> yes. yes. I'm in my fifties and I'm okay with myself. I'm okay with my own sexuality. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of, when you're younger, you're like, oh my gosh, I cannot be that way, but it's okay. Embrace it. Absolutely. I, I had my, my boldness was in my twenties. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. It, it, and that's just the thing. It's I I was jerked into having to, which is a continual thing. So let's just say that you know right. your growth and the embracing of yourself, the healing of yourself, is forever ongoing. Mm -hmm. And that's an important piece to understand, especially for the person that asked that question. You know, it's not like all of your healing will happen. Boom, boom. You know, it's been 10 years. You healed from it. Right. And I'm good. And I keep going. It will be ongoing. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of us. Right. Is to be okay with that ongoing healing and to accept those that help as it comes throughout the years. And the challenges. I love challenges. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And so I'm so happy that we're sitting here talking about this because women shy away from talking about um, intimacy and especially sexual intimacy, which is important for women. It's one of the type um, of intimacies that is really important, especially I think for, for many women, it's sexual and emotional intimacy that are combined. Absolutely. And you, yeah. And when you are adding that communication of, hey, I can express. 
Yeah, we have to be, we, we all, but especially women, have to get away from being afraid to having sexual intimacy as one of your top three. Mm -hmm. Because your body, what it craves is what it wants. And it's okay for you to say that and go after that. Right. But many of us feel sometimes that I'm, well, that, oh my gosh, if I say I want this, then maybe I'm looked at as um, a whore or yes, or a bad person or, you know, a person that isn't um, Christian or godly or whatever the case may be, you know, for, for shame. Absolutely. For expressing Definitely. our needs. Definitely. And that, that portrayal, you know, what is it? Art or imitates life or life imitates arts. One of the, one of the two, we're just thinking about what we see on TV, what we hear in the radio. Um, we go so far trying to get away from that image that has been put on TV or the radio that we forget to live real life. Your sexual cravings and desires are a part of your real life. And we have to just ignore what TV puts up and what radio says and listen to our ourselves. Having a sexual desire or craving does not mean, hey, I'm going to find the first five guys or girls that I see and I'm going to jump on them and I'm going to fulfill this. What it means is sit and listen to yourself. What is What do I need more of? Is right. it just I need a sensual massage from myself? Right. Or do I find a class that teaches me sensual touch of myself? Or does that mean I explore this relationship with one partner and I, I express this with this one partner? Maybe I don't want a committed relationship, but I want a partner that I can express my sexual desires with. And I have that conversation and we have that intimacy between us. Right. Right. But for many people, they're like, oh, my gosh, they don't know how to do that. Yeah. 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 It can so, become difficult. It can become difficult. But what we're saying is use your voice, communicate it. Yeah. Express your needs. Oh, absolutely. Right. And if you feel if the person that um, is responding back to you judges you for it, then maybe that's not the person for you. And you move and on. Unfortunately, that's the person that we're going to take our cue from and run with it. Right. Right. And move from it. You know, don't don't get stuck in that. Because like you said, and, and touch is really uh, one of those essential things that we all need. And even that sensual touch. And like you said, if you don't know how, like I don't know how, I don't even know. Um, like I was in a counseling session and they've been struggling for intimacy. And it turns out that the woman herself had never even touched her own self. Yeah. yeah. She was probably shamed for it. Right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I think, I think about just children and, and you see it more often than we pay attention to, but a small child who puts their hand on their crotch or they, you know, do something that's automatically, no, that's startling to a child. Like, oh my gosh, that has to be something wrong. And then you never talk about it right. <laughs> ever again. And so if I'm, if I'm ridiculed or I'm punished for it when I'm small, and then we never talk about it as I grow up, this must be a shameful thing that I shouldn't do. So now I'm going to be sneaky which means I'm not going to ask for the proper way. I'm going to just kind of figure things out. And so if it doesn't feel right or it's just awkward, then it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. And like you just said, you find those things out when you seek the professional guidance. And then it's like, oh, okay. Never thought about that. Right. Right. <laughs> and many women out there may, or some people may say, you know, um, it's the same thing because I'm just thinking how sometimes men don't know about the emotional piece because maybe their parents or relatives never hugged them or, or 
had them express their emotions, okay? Same thing in the sense about sexual intimacy. Many times growing up as women, we're taught don't, 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 mm -hmm. you know, until you're married. And that's all we, you were said. And we're not taught anything else. And what Coach K and I are saying, it is okay to explore yourself. It's okay to have a sexual desire. It's okay to communicate to your partner about your needs. A thousand percent. Um, some of the classes that I started to do here in end of 2022 and into 23 and ongoing are truly sensual touch classes. Mm -hmm. And they're there for ladies. And then I have one for couples. And the one for couples, the expression on their faces with some of the exercises, because it, it's about, you know, eight couples and they're just focused on the person in front of them, mm. which is an exercise in itself. You right. know, all the stuff going around, I have to be focused on on you. And some of the simplest things, just uh, just massaging each other's hand, mm -hmm. pressure points of the hand. Just holding your partner's waist. Right. Something that you may have never even thought of. It gives you different feelings in different parts of your body and it triggers different pieces of your brain to react mm -hmm. in, a, in a positive way. Yeah. So I, important. Yeah. I was just thinking as I, I, I'm visualizing this is that, and I've heard many people sometimes don't even really face each other when yeah. they have sex. So, or even, yeah, or even having dinner together. So you're, you're putting them where they have to look at each other's eyes and make that intimate connection. Yeah. And the, the usually, because they're, we don't talk. Mm. And so you're just communicating with your eyes and the energy exchange. And there's so much emotion that comes in those classes because there's so much that you want to say that most times just looking at each other, you say so much, mm -hmm. but when you're focused on each other, it just opens up the communication line. And then later, you know, when they go home, the ride home is probably just amazing because now we're talking about probably new things that we didn't think to talk about. <laughs> Yeah. So if you're out there listening, I mean, I think that's a great technique that couples can start to do is just, like you said, face each other and slowly, slowly touch that, sens that um, sensual touch. Yes. I love it so much. My gracious. Yes. <laughs> and sensual touch, guys, is not fast touch. Sensual right. touch is slow touch, slow and um, directive and purposeful. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's the key, that purpose, purposeful touch. Woo. Mm -hmm. Touch with the meaning behind it. Definitely. Yes, yes. yes. Um, and so I know that um, <clears throat> and each time that we're going to be talking, we're going to share some tips and stuff. So we're going to go take a break and then we come back. We have a couple of different tips and maybe even a toy or two to share. We'll be back in a moment. Sex should not be the elephant in the room. The fourth ebook of the Improving Intimacy book series from Bringing Intimacy Back, It's All About Sex, helps you navigate every which way you can tend to your sex life. Pulling out all the stops, dive into the central read about sex toys, silky linens, and date nights. Improving Intimacy, it's All About Sex is available on Amazon, Kindle, Audible, and paperback. Search Dr. April Brown on Amazon to view all her books on improving intimacy for yourself, spouse, and more. Welcome back to the Bring in Intimacy show where intimacy is real. So we've been talking about self-empowerment um, for women to feel empowered on um, intimacy. And it's okay, women, to take initiative. Yes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you take initiative, that's also that feeling of um, dominant. 
Oh my gracious, yes, indeed. That feels great. <laughs> right, right, right. Do you know about 60% of women fantasize about being dominant? But they don't even know. Some of them are too shy to even go about doing that. Oh, can you imagine if we all acted on that? <laughs> Yeah, but it's okay. Yes. Yeah, definitely. In the sense of dominance. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what, um, in the sense of dominance, I know you have um, something to show us to help women who may want to think about being dominant. Absolutely. Um, the, you know, the biggest thing is when it comes to dominance is having a firm trust, trusting relationship with whoever's going to be in your space or, you know, the submissive sort of say um, person that, that you're going to partner with. And one of the things that I have here that is kind of a, a fun way to explore your dominance um, is what you can hear some of the metal clanking, but this is, um, this is a like a spreader bar. This is a fun tool that you can utilize again with a trusted partner. So it comes in with a lot of trust. And what these little hooks are is if you like, you can put some um, cloth handcuffs or metal hand club cuffs on here. There's a middle piece here that if you had a nice collar, you know, because that's mm -hmm. even having the collar on is a way for your you to be that dominant partner and your partner to be that submissive. So you put that on here. And then, of course, the other um, handcuff or, or anklet could go here. But that's just to kind of have that person held in place comes with a lot of trust. You can always just use one side at a time to build that trust up. And if you really want to assert a little bit of dominance, putting that eye mask on mm. and that's where the trusting part comes in because if I'm going to cover your face, then you're letting me know that we're now in this trusted activity and then something very sensual using something very light as just this fun flogger. Mm -hmm. So now I have the spreader bar with either the, the wrist or the ankles are kind of in place. I'm going to put this mask on my partner and I'm just going to gently run this on my partner's skin. And when it comes to dominant dominance and any of these activities, consent is 1000% the leader. And so you would ask, is it okay if I place this mask on? Mm -hmm. Wait for that. Yes. Express and continue. Yes. Is it okay that I use this flogger? And then even though you're the dominant partner, ask your submissive partner, how would you like me to use these tools on you? Would you like me to just rub gently? Would you like me to hit a little harder? Where would you like this to be? So as the dominant, you don't have to necessarily give all of the orders. You can just be in control of how the activities happen. This one activity can build another layer of trust with you and your partner. So I think these are so cool and fun. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And um, two things I was just thinking of when you put in the blindfold, of course, that heightens all the other senses. It really does. Yes, yes. And then as we've been talking about dominant and submissive, the submissive person does have a whole lot of control also. Yes. Yes, yeah. So understanding that that full balance and when you understand the roles of dominance and submissiveness, then you really, really know how powerful the submissive person really, how much power they really hold. Right. And so when we hear that word submissive, it's, you know, people just think, oh my, I don't want to be submissive because they think it's so weak. And it's like, there's a lot of power in submissiveness mm -hmm. because just like I said, if that dominant person is, is saying to you, how would you 
right. like this to go. You can turn a lot may, of that off. Yeah. Can, exactly. May I place this on you for that consent? Mm -hmm. They're placing, they're still allowing you. And that's how a dominant role should honestly be. There should be a true balance of power per se. Right. Um, if there's to be a, a true dominant situation. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think also um, when people are dominant in the bedroom, and especially if they struggle in being um, stand up for themselves, but then they uh, learn, learn how to be dominant in a safe, intimate environment with the partner they trust. It can boost their self-esteem. Yeah. You know, that they're able to use outside of the bedroom also. Absolutely. In our classes with our couples, they all get like a treat bag. And a flogger is always one of the items that I place in that to-go bag um, because they can use it here in class. Right. And then they can also utilize that once they get home for different senses. Mm-hmm. In different fields, it's it's super fun. Um, but in class, we also we talk about the dominant partner is going to do X, Y, and Z. Okay. So I, I love that balance of power. Yes, definitely. And I was just thinking, I do something similar in those in my retreats that I give the floggers and and um, different toys that they can utilize. You know what I'm saying? To play with each other because the bedroom should be a playful. And I'm not saying, I'm using the word bedroom, but the place where you do intimacy or have intimacy, wherever that is, and it can be a variety of places, it should be playful. And speaking of, you know, kind of bringing some fun, some toys into the, the bedroom, what would be one that you could suggest that, you know, could be, could, with a dominance and submissive or playfulness um, role, what would you suggest? So one of the things that I brought, uh, if you guys can see, is a wand. Yes. It's pretty purple. Yeah, it's purple. <laughs> All my um, things that I get for the office is always purple. And the reason why I'm, I'm having this right here, this wand, because we talked about partner intimacy and we also talked about self-intimacy. And this one can be used for both. Mm -hmm. I love that you said that. So yes. explain that. Yes. I, I, hopefully everybody can see the one pretty well. So the one can be used for both. And what I mean by that is um, as a female, for you to explore yourself, having a one that um, in this one, this one vibrates at different levels, you can control it. Mm. And you can figure out what feels good, you know, because it can stimulate the clitoris. And in that process, as you know what feels good for you, you can share it with your partner. You that know? is so smart. <laughs> yes, yeah. And so partners, um, especially the male partners, they're not necessarily the female partners, but sometimes male partners get jealous by mm -hmm. other instruments in the bed bedroom, but they shouldn't because this gets the woman excited. And as the woman is much more excited and um, much more aroused, if it, it's going to feel better for the man in some aspect too. So, definitely. so finding the perfect, I guess, vibration and spot, and then handing that over to your partner. Yes would even heighten how you feel because it's bigger than just the feel of the toy. Now it's my, my partner right. is giving me this pleasure. Right. Oh my gracious. That's a new level of, of, of pleasure. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> and the partner gets something out of it too. Yeah. Because they can see the, mm. um, the joy. And they can share in that joy and erotic moment. Using you know? multiple senses in that one yes. moment. Definitely. Yes. Yes. And, and you can use that instrument on other parts of your body or his body or whatever. So definitely, it's definitely a way to go. I love that. Um, I think it's, it's very important. And I appreciate that you brought that to 
this show to remind people that any en en enhancement that you bring into the bedroom should be meant to be a shared experience. Um, and the visualization for the person that's giving that pleasure. Oh, it, it's visuals everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Well, this has been a great show. We're going to take a small break and then we come back. We're going to see what's coming up next. Life can be overwhelming sometimes. We think we are a burden to others. We think that it's better to hide it and suppress our hurt, but it's not. As Cave Coral Therapists, we will provide you with quality, confidential counseling services in a relaxing and peaceful environment. Talk to a professional today. Book an appointment on www.cavecoraltherapist.com or call 239-565-6921. Welcome back to the Bringing Intimacy Show, where intimacy is real. Yes. I'm excited. That was a great show. Um, we had some great fun, great topic. And I definitely hope that our viewers and listeners just get, it sparks some conversations and it answers some questions for them. Uh, of course, if they want to explore more, they can contact either one of us, you know, for more information. Right, right. right. Or... Um, follow us on all the um, social media and maybe add a comment and stuff. And we will definitely add that in or answer your question because we'll be doing this more often. Yes. Keeping that conversation going. And speaking of keeping the conversation going, yes. we have some great shows that are coming up and I'm super excited about continuing into this Women's Month of Beautifulness. So we have on March 9th, Dating in Today's Generation with Alan Ramakalawan, and I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> on March the 16th, we have Losing to Winning Relationship Strategies. It's going to be a great one. On March the 23rd, we have Wisdom in the new is the New Currency with Mary Henderson. And then on March the 30th, we have Love is Not a Transaction with Kim Sorrell. All right. Definitely some wonderful shows coming up. Yes. Well, happy um, Women's Month again. And we will see you guys next week, same time in the Bringing Intimacy Back. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Bringing Intimacy Back, where intimacy is real. You can also find us at bringingintimacyback.com, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Dr. April Brown's seventh book series, Improving Intimacy, is now on Amazon. We'll see you next Thursday at 3.30 p.m. Don't forget to follow, share, and subscribe.